15 minute or less lecture series, Human Anatomy, Chapter 21, Special Senses, Part 2. Moving on to hearing and equilibrium. That's right, there's a sense called equilibrium. Hearing and equilibrium, their detectors are housed within the temporal bone itself, the temporal bone of the skull. So, anatomy of the ear. The ear is very critical for hearing and equilibrium. Uh, especially needed for hearing is uh, the external ear. So here is the external ear. The external ear includes the oracle, which is the fleshy part of the ear on the outside. We can get pierced, etc. It's very lovely to look at, I suppose. It funnels sound waves into the canal, into the external auditory canal. Looking at the oracle, you see you have the more rigid uh, upper two-thirds. That is the helix, uh, made primarily of elastic cartilage, and then the lower quarter third or so, the lobule, which is primarily adipose tissue. The external audio canal then takes those sound waves that are funneled in and carries them deeper into the skull until it hits a structure called the tympanic membrane. You may know it as the eardrum. Tympanic membrane is a thin, semi-transparent structure that vibrates when the sound waves hit it. And remember, sound waves are pressure waves of a gas air. All right, then that brings us to the middle ear. The middle ear is another airfield structure. So this is an airfield chamber. It houses the auditory ossicles or the bones in the ear. You have attached to the tympanic membrane is the malleus. The malleus is also attached to the incus. And then the incus is also attached to the stapes. And the stapes fits into a structure, a membrane structure called the uh, oval window that then transmits the vibration to the internal ear. So um, basically, if you have the tympanic membrane vibrating, it causes the malleus to vibrate, which causes the incus to vibrate, which causes the stapes to vibrate, which then vibrates the oval window, passes it into the internal ear. Uh, you also have uh, the oval window, as already mentioned, which is a membrane that leads into the internal ear, as well as a uh, below that, a round window. The round window is also a membrane structure, and it's usually transmitting vibrations out of the inner ear. Also found in the middle ear is this tube called the auditory tube. This tube connects the middle ear to the pharynx, to the back of the throat. And this is important because it allows the air pressure in the middle ear to equalize with the pressure on the air outside of us. If this doesn't happen, if we get an uh, change in pressure from compared to the middle ear to outside in the external environment, then that would dampen the vibrations of the tympanic membrane and make it harder to hear. So we need this tube to allow equalization of that pressure. You often can feel this process occurring when you're flying in a plane and you feel your ears popping. That popping is the equalization of pressure in the middle ear to match that in the air around us. All right, so that brings us finally to the internal ear. The internal ear is a bony structure, this weird shaped bony structure called the bony labyrinth. Within the bony labyrinth is a fluid called the perilymph. Also within the bony labyrinth is a membrane structure that fill, fills in the same areas called the membranous labyrinth. And the membranous labyrinth is also filled with fluid called the endolymph. So basically, we have a bony structure filled with fluid and a big water balloon that is also filled with fluid, the water balloon being the membranous labyrinth. So if we were to break the bones into three regions, we would include the semicircular canals, which are these three curved bony structures. These would be the semicircular canals. You would have the vestibule, which is this region here that attaches both to the semicircular canals and the cochlea. And then the third area being the cochlea itself, this little snail shell shaped structure. Now the semicircular canals widened uh, at three different locations where they are attaching to the vestibule. And these widened areas are called the ampulla. This is where we house the sense of dynamic equilibrium. Within the vestibule, we have two membrane structures called the uh, utricle up here and the saccule. These structures house our sense of static equilibrium. Yes, there are two different kinds of equilibrium. And then finally, within the cochlea, we have a membrane tube called the cochlear duct that winds up through the cochlea. And the cochlear duct is what houses the structures for hearing, for the sense of hearing. And again, we have a membrane structure within a bony structure 
fluid within the membrane structure and fluid between the membrane structure and the bony structure. All right, we'll start with hearing with, uh, within the cochlea. Now, if we look at the cochlea, there are three fluid-filled chambers. There's the superior chamber called the scala vestibuli that's directly above the cochlear duct. And then the second fluid chamber is the cochlear duct itself. We have the cochlear membrane. And then below that, inferior to that, would be the scala tympani, which is the third chamber. The scala vestibuli and the scala uh, tympani are filled with perilymph, while the cochlear duct is filled with endolymph. Um, the scala vestibuli and the scala tympani do actually connect, are continuous with each other at the apex of the cochlea. Now, the scala vestibuli connects, opens up to the oval window. So the vibrations coming from the oval window will go into the scala vestibuli. And finally, the scala tympani ends with the round window. So that any pressure waves still traveling through the scala tympani will dissipate out the round window. So the vibrations enter via the oval window into the scala vestibuli and then exit from the scala tympani through the round window. Within the cochlear duct, is the structure for hearing. It is a long structure called the spiral organ that spirals up the uh, cochlea. And it is the fluid pressure waves that are entering the cochlear duct that stimulate the spiral organ to allow us to detect what we call hearing. So here is a close up of a cross section of the cochlear duct. Here we can see the spiral organ with its pectoral membrane and its epithelial cells that hold, nurse, and support. The, hair, the receptors, which are called the hair cells. So we have outer hair cells and inner hair cells. Now, the hair cells, the receptors, have structures called hair bundles that are embedded in the tectoral membrane. So that when pressure waves come in to the cochlear duct, they will hit the tectoral membrane, causing it to vibrate. This vibrate will, vibration will then bend the hair bundles of the hair cells. The actual physical bending of these um, hair-like structures is what is the signal that will then be transmitted to the sensory neurons. That means the hair cells are mechanoreceptors and actual physical change is what is being detected. So the story of hearing, well, it all starts with the oracle funneling sound waves into the external auditory canal that travels down and then hits the tympanic membrane, causing it to vibrate. It causes the malleus to vibrate, which causes the incus to vibrate, which causes the stapes to vibrate, which then causes vibrations in the oval window. This then passes the vibrations into the scala uh, vestibuli as pressure waves. These pressure waves will then uh, move down the cochlea until it reaches the area that that frequency is attuned to. It will then pass through the uh, cochlear duct into the cochlear duct. It will then hit the tectoral membrane, which will bend the hair cells of the hair, uh, the hairs of the hair cells of the spiral organ. This will generate a signal that will be transmitted to the sensory neurons. That will then, the sensory neurons will carry that signal into the brain. The really cool thing again is that this long duct is tuned to different frequencies, so that the pressure waves of different frequencies will enter different areas of the cochlear duct. Uh, you can think of it sort of like a piano keyboard where different keys have different pitches. All right, the auditory neural pathway. So the sensory neuron that receives a signal from the hair cells will carry it into the brain stem. There, that information will be transmitted up to the thalamus. And then from there, it will go to the primary auditory area in the temporal lobe. And as you can see here, the signal goes to both sides of the brain. This allows us to help us localize where sounds are coming from. Disorders. Otitis media is an acute infection of no ear, uh, usually caused by bacteria entering via the auditory tube. There's sensorineural deafness. This is caused by impairment of the hair cells in the cochlea or damage to the nerves itself. And then there's conduction deafness, which is caused by some sort of impairment or damage to the external or middle ear mechanisms, say one of the auditory ossicles is damaged, broken. All right, equilibrium. Uh, we will see that equilibrium is found within the vestibular apparatus, which is composed of the saclea, the utricle, and the semicircular ducts within the semicircular canals. And this is for both static and dynamic equilibrium. If we want to talk about static equilibrium, we are looking specifically at the in the ampulla of the 
Um, my, sorry. Uh, static equilibrium is within the utricle and saccule within the vestibule. So static equilibrium, relative position of the body compared to gravity, is localized to the utricle and saccule, which are found in the vestibule. Uh, there's a thickened area in these structures called the macula. And in this thickened area, you have this gelatinous mass called the otolithic membrane, there's little crystals in it called otoliths. There are also support cells that help support hair cells. And these hair cells have hair bundles that push up into the otolithic membrane. It should sound familiar. Uh, when you change the position of your head, then the gelatinous mass will move in response to gravity. This movement will bend the hair bundles of the hair cells. And this will generate the signal that gets passed on to the sensory neurons. So that means hair cells, again, are acting as mechanoreceptors. And that allows us to know the relative position of our head and therefore our body to gravity. Dynamic equilibrium. Dynamic equilibrium is localized to the ampulla of the semicircular canals. Uh, they are detecting dynamic equilibrium. This is the relative position of body uh, in relation to movements, rotational acceleration. So we're detecting how we're moving. Um, so, the structures found in the ampulla include the crista. The crista is an elevated structure with various support cells that are supporting hair cells. The hair cells have hair bundles that push up and are embedded in a gelatinous structure called a cartilaginous structure called the cupula. The cupula is a big um, structure surrounded by the fluid within the um, semicircular ducts. And Basically, what happens is when your head is turned in one direction or multiple directions, this will generate a current within the fluid that will then move the cupula. When it bends the cupula, this will bend the hair bundles of the hair cells, which then will generate a signal that gets passed on to the sensory neurons. So again, hair cells acting as mechanoreceptors. This allows us to know when we are moving our head, which in theory could mean when we're moving our whole body. So it lets us know when we're shaking our head up and down, or in a circle, or when our car is doing a sharp turn. Kids love it. They love to do spinning circles really, really fast, over uh, stimulating our dynamic equilibrium sensations, causing us to get dizzy. All right, the neural pathways for equilibrium is very complex. It ends up sending information from uh, the first order sensory neuron to the um, various structures of the cerebrum, to the cerebellum, to some structures in the brainstem, and also up to the thalamus or it gets transmitted by third order sensory neurons to the vestibular area in the temporal lobe, which detects a lot of equilibrium. But again, this one has a very complicated pathway. Anyway, I hope that was very helpful. And sorry for any errors I may have made. Uh, hit like and subscribe below.